Hey everybody, this is Jim Buck with Black Shoes Camper in the city of industry in Southern California. Today I'm gonna to give you a tutorial on some of our powering systems going into our solar panels, through our battery, and into our TV. We're going into the appliances. So let's get into this, let's get going. So one of the first parts that's going to be the most critical part of our solar system is the solar panels. Now this isn't the solar panel that we typically find up on the roof. This is one of our portable ones. And so this one has 60 watts and 60 watts. So we're gonna be getting 120 watts worth of power out of these panels. Now these panels are always on. They're always receiving sunlight. So if they're receiving sunlight, they're receiving the power. That power is being sent through a controller box and it's going to go on through the rest of the system. So as part of our system, we have the solar panel, and like I said, the solar panel is going to go to a controller box. Now this isn't the controller box you're going to find on all of our units. This is just one of the models that we do have. Some models do have actually buttons that you can adjust, you can do different settings, but what happens is the power is going to go from the solar panel into the controller box. Now the controller box is also monitoring the power of the battery. Now if the battery needs to be continually charged, then it's going to convert the energy, send it to the battery, keep the battery charged. When the battery is fully charged, it actually will shut off the power and will stop it here at the control box. So that way you're not causing any damage to your battery. So from the controller module, we're gonna go into our battery. This is a 12 volt DC battery. It's 100 amp hours. It is a gel style AGM battery. So we're gonna get a lot of power out of it. Now our HQ models, they're gonna have two of these. So we have a greater amount of capacity for our amperage hours. So we're gonna be charging our battery, keeping it charged as an DC powered. But in order to run some of our appliances, such as our TVs and our microwaves, we need to utilize an inverter so that way we can go from a DC direct current power to an AC power. So from your 12 volt DC battery power, we come into our AC power through our inverter. We use a 2000 watt inverter in our larger AQ, HQ models. In some of our smaller models, our tent models, we do use a 1000 watt inverter. So in order to be able to utilize just on a quick use of our microwave or our TV, we need to have that AC power without having to plug into our 30 amp plug or a shoreline or even utilizing a generator. So we have this 2000 watt inverter and it's usually mounted underneath one of the dyne at seats along with the batteries. So there's a couple different settings and we want to make sure we get this all cleared up because we do have some questions about it. Now there is a switch right here on the front and so if you can see here the switch does say inverter on, it says inverter off and then it says power save auto. Now this is a setting that usually if when the technicians are installing a new appliance they're going to use the power save auto. You do not as a consumer want to use the power save auto setting. You want to leave that off. Now, if you are using only the inverter to turn on and off, then you would use the inverter on switch and you would want it in that setting. Now, in the Black Series models, we utilize an external switch. So that way you don't have to get underneath the uh, dinette seat on a regular basis. This will be mounted on a wall very clearly, very easily accessed. So the setting you want your inverter physically to be on is the off position. You want it in the center position. You don't ever want to have the switch that's on the wall and the inverter in the same positions. You don't want to have them in the both on position at the same time. You can have them in the both off position, but not both in the same on. So on normal operation, when you are just gonna be turning on the TV, utilizing your microwave, you walk over to the wall, turn your switch to the on position, and then your inverter will be turned on. You can use your microwave, you can use your TV at that time. Okay, now, now that we've kind of discussed about going from a DC power to an AC power, now we're gonna talk about our inverter becoming a converter. It also acts as a battery charger as well. So as you plug into your shoreline or your generator, your inverter is going to now charge your battery, but you still need to turn on your switch. So your main control panel, you're gonna leave that in the 
off position. Remember, this does not ever change. This stays in the off position. Now, on the other hand, if something happens to your external panel, the one that you can access easily, something happens to that, by all means, then you can go and utilize this switch. But just set this switch to the off position. All right, so if you're going to charge the battery, not utilizing your solar panel, you're gonna be using the 30 amp plug, then this needs to be turned to the on position because that is now turning this on. That's gonna run, the fan's gonna run a cooling fan. You're gonna hear that going, so it's gonna convert it from an AC power to a DC power to charge the batteries. All right, everybody, so just as a recap, so that way we make sure we're all clear on this, the solar panels, always on, always receiving power. Always sending the power to the controller box. The box is always sending power to the batteries to charge, but it'll shut off when the battery is fully charged. While you are charging with the solar panels, you should have the inverter switches all in the off position. Otherwise, you will create a draw that you may not necessarily need. Okay, so we always want to be charging our batteries, keep our batteries charged, turn on the inverter when we're plugged into a landline, so that way we're charging by way of a battery charger, but otherwise, leave that off, so that way the solar panels are doing their job, keeping your batteries charged at all times. Even though there is a battery cutoff switch, unless you put a battery cutoff switch between the solar panels and the control box, they're always gonna be on, always charging. Hope this helped everybody. Hope this answered some questions. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us and I can get out some answers to you. Take care everybody. Have a great day.